Now I shall introduce the fundamental theorem of calculus, FTC, part 2. So this might seem a bit trickier than FTC part 1, but um, what I'll tell everyone is not to stress about it so much. It's a bit easier than it looks. That's what I'll, what I'll tell you. And I will uh, ask you to focus a bit on the application and on the examples. Okay? And, um, okay, so we have, if we have, capital F of X. And I tell you that uh, little f is continuous. And the integral from A to X a is a constant. Okay, that's very important. From a to x of f of t dt. t is what we call a dummy variable. Dummy variable. Then, so if we have this, then the derivative of capital F of x is equal to little f of x. Or similarly, the derivative of the integral from a to x of f t dt is equal to f of x. Now something really important, note that it's dt, not dx. Okay? Very important. So let's use the FTC to evaluate these three derivatives of integrals here. So what is the derivative of the integral from 3 to x of 5t squared? Well, in this case we have the 3, that's just a constant. And here we have the x. So that's essentially exactly what we have in this circumstance here. right? So essentially, in this case, it can plug in the x for and replace the t and that's all we get okay so this whole thing is just equivalent to 5x squared but now for the second example here we have something a bit different I have I want to find the derivative from x to 8 or, or sorry the derivative of the integral from x to 8 so what I'm going to need to do here is actually bring out a negative. Okay? Once I do, I will end up with this. And that's a property of indefinite integrals. We have a video about that. If you haven't checked it out yet, you can go on our website. So that's a property of definite integrals. You can just, if I take out a negative, if I, or if I make the, if I have a negative here, I can switch the x and the 8. Great. And now, essentially, I have a constant on the, on the bottom here. So I go from 8 to x. So the whole thing is essentially just going to be equal to 3, or rather, forgot the negative outside, negative 3 sine squared of x. Fantastic. That's it. Now, last example. This one will be a bit more interesting because we no longer have just an x. We're going from 5 to x squared here. In this case, we're actually going to have to take the chain rule. Okay? And what we're going to need to do is then we're going to have 7 e. Now, we're going from a constant over to x squared. So we have 7 e to the 2 x squared times the derivative of x squared which is just 2x so that's a little bit different in case we have a function there that's just not x or rather that that's not just x <laughs> so 7 times 2 is 14 so we have 14 x e to the power of 2 x squared great now Try some questions on your own, and good luck.